Um, we're going to deal with in integration again. We've dealt with most of the things you need to do. This is sort of the last bit of things you have to be able to integrate uh, at this level. And I just want to deal with a pain in the neck constant. So if we had something like the integral of cos 2x dx. So we're trying to integrate cos 2x. We know that integrate cos because we remember that when we had our differentiation chart, we had sine x turned into cos x by differentiation. So integration cos is going to turn back to sine. <coughs> so dealing with the cos is easy enough. It's going to turn to a sine. The problem is, what is this bit in the middle? So the first guess, my like first hope, so we'll try putting a question mark and see if it works, is that, let's just try ignoring this and see what happens. It's always a good try. So cos is going to turn into sine. 2x. Oops, that was a dx. Have we done the integration? So we don't need dx anymore. We do need a plus c, whoever, on the end. Okay, so that's, that's worth, worth a crack. We know we've dealt with the cos. But the problem is, if we differentiate this thing, does it come back to that one? And the answer, unfortunately, is no, not quite. Because this thing is a chain rule, isn't it? It's an inside function wrapped up in an outside function. So when we differentiate this thing, if we differentiate, so it should undo integration, when we differentiate this, it's going to be the derivative of the outside bit operating on the inside bit, so far so good, times the derivative of the inside bit. And it mucks it up. We don't get back to where we started from. We end up with a stupid two out the front. So we need some way of dealing with that two. And all we have to do put a half in there. Because then when we differentiate back, we've got that half in there. And then the half and the two cancel out, and we end up where we want it to be. Okay, so when we differentiate something like this, the chain rule means that we get an extra two coming through. So we end up multiplying by two. And given that integration is going to be the opposite of that, we have to effectively divide by two so that we can deal with the times by two when we come back. That's really all there is to it. So the integral of sine 50t dt, and as I've done there, I've changed my variable now. I'm not dealing with x's. I'm dealing with t's for some reason. Um, and so the integral and the dt is the, this is the function we're doing, and the sine 50t is the actual function. Okay. So all it's going to be is going to be, when we integrate sine, what do we get? So if we look on this table, we have this one. So when we go sine back to cosine, we've got to change the sign. So we need sine, you know, the plus minus sign, not as opposed to the sine cosine sign, but the sign. So we end up with negative. And to deal with this 50, we need 1 50th of cosine of 50t. Yeah? So basically, if inside the, the function, you've got the variable you're dealing with multiplied by a constant. It only works if it's multiplied by a constant. If I had another x in there or something, it'd be a disaster because when your chain rule came back, you wouldn't have a constant. You'd still have an x in it. You'd have a product rule. It would all tend to custom. So if it's just an obnoxious constant, then you can deal with it by dividing through by it. Um, so for example, if we're trying to do the integral of uh, 4e to the 5x, the 4 is just going to be a 4. When we try and integrate e, it stays the same. But there's the obnoxious constant, which is that 5. So we need a 1 fifth in here, which I would write as 4 fifths e to the 5x. Yeah. So it's dealing with this, I call it an obnoxious constant, but it's a constant inside the function constant of multiplication inside the function that you're trying to deal with, you bring it out the front as 1 over that constant. And basically, it undoes the chain rule going backwards. So just a little trick that, that um, means we can do a whole bunch of things that look like that reasonably easily. And there will be quite a few that look like that. So just keep an eye open for the constant of multiplication inside your function is, is all you want to deal with.